Okay, perfect. Hello. Um, let me look out of that. Hey, everyone. Hi, Claire. <laughs> um, so, I was saying, welcome back. I hope everyone's had a great week. Um, happy Wednesday. It's hump day. We're halfway there. Woo. <laughs> um, yeah. Okay. So, today, as you can read, hopefully by the title, we're going to be editing some photos in Lightroom. I, this worked out great because I just happened to get a free trial for Lightroom for this week. And this is the last day to use it. So now, I will show you on the computer how to use Lightroom. I typically, let me state this now, I am no expert. Do not take and listen to every word I say as a rule. Um, but I normally do Lightroom Mobile on my com on my phone, and I used to have the Lightroom desktop app. So uh, we'll see what I can remember. I think I'll be using some of my like settings for my phone to compare to here. Um, I have not imported any photos, but I went ahead and put some photos that I have in a folder. And I did forget my camera at home. So these are the photos from my camera that have been on my phone. So there's only a few of them. I've tried to go through and take out all the ones that had a family member. Hopefully, I think one or two might slip by. We'll see. We'll see who gets lucky enough to be in here. But, okay, good. I'm glad that you've never used it because then we can learn. So, yes. Number one. Let me get situated. Okay. So basically, let me tell you what Lightroom is. <laughs> exactly. Here's a link to the Lightroom site in case anybody wants to download it. Um, NC State does not give a free trial, but we do have discounted Adobe through State. I do know that. Um, but basically, Lightroom is a photo editing program. And you can, it's my favorite because it organizes your photos as well so it's really nice for when you're uploading and like editing a thousand photos this summer I took some senior photos and there were so many to go through and I could have not I could not have done it without Lightroom there are three versions of Lightroom I believe one that I've used before is called raw therapy um, and that one is also a download program so you download that onto your computer it's free though and it's the best comparison to Lightroom it is missing like a few different things that Lightroom has but nothing to where it's like you can't do anything um, and then it doesn't organize like your photos as well yeah so if you love organization Lightroom's definitely the way to go but if you don't like the price I don't um, <laughs> you can go and use um, raw therapy and then also it doesn't save your history, so that's kind of not the best, but Lightroom, since it's connected to your Adobe account, will always save what you put on there. And then it can also connect to your phone. So I use the Lightroom mobile app on my iPhone, and that is free. It does not have all, I think it's honestly just missing like two things. It's missing like the gradient and something else that you don't really need to edit photos. So the Lightroom mobile app is a great app. Um, you get to like save your presets, which for those of you that don't know, preset is basically like settings. It's a saved settings for like the light adjustment and the contour and saturation and all those fun words. So basically if you like, like how you edited one photo to look, you can copy and paste that edit on a bunch and then go in and like tweak it a little bit so that all of your photos have the same overall theme and look to them. Which is very nice especially I've never been one for like an aesthetic Instagram I like looking at them but I can never keep up with that and I do know that all of those girls that have all those photos where it's like very organized and very like same color palette they all use presets um, I'm trying to think of the alternative editing apps editing apps for your phone too I'm sure a lot of people have heard of Visco that's a big one. We've also got, um, let me, let me just see what I've got. I have a whole folder full of photo editing apps. 
because I like taking photos. And so, let's see. Okay, Visco, that one is like the intro app. It's very simple. It has pre-made presets, so it makes your photos look 10 times better in like two seconds and you did nothing. But you can tell people you did. You've got, oh, um, PixArt. PixArt is more towards like Photoshopping kind of is what I use it for. So say you take a photo and there's this random man in the background, you can use Pixar and like copy other clips of your photo, clone like the image and basically get rid of them. It's the best. It's really fun to do too. And then you can also just Photoshop random things. I've Photoshopped my sister's dog on a hot air balloon. I made him a model in France, put him on a little boat and everything. It's a great time. Okay, there's also, oh, Photoshop, oh, and then Tezza, but Tezza is, cost money, but it's very pretty, and she has a few filters that you can put over photos that are fine, but yeah. Honestly, these cheap apps do wonders with Photoshopping, like, I use them all the time, and nobody ever knows. It saves the quality just the same, and then there is also Photoshop for your phone, but I just find it very difficult to use on the phone. But like Pixar, it's genuinely so easy because you can take like the same photo that you have or like two different photos and overlay them and then like combine and erase the background to like put one photo on another photo. Maybe at the end, if we have time, the overhead camera's working, I can, we can Photoshop something fun because that's, that's what I like to do in my free time. <laughs> but yeah, okay, so getting into the Lightroom catalog. I don't know why it's called that, but this is basically what the program looks like. I believe I made it to where you guys can see this entire section. So let me know if like my mouse goes out of the screen and you guys can't see. Um, but yeah, it's just a gray basic program. Um, right now I don't have any photos in. So that is number one is to import the photos way we do that is you hit the giant button that says import so it's not too difficult and then I don't know who these people are I won't lie I'm sorry um basically you go yeah that's the thing I like it's very dark and which does help because if you're sitting there and editing photos for like two hours like we're about to do basically you know your eyes start playing tricks on you so the dark kind of like helps you focus on the photos colors versus anything else. There is a way, and hopefully we'll try and find the way how to do that, that basically when you're done editing a photo, you can put a white background to it to see like how it'll look in with like a different color in the background. So, which like helps with printing and stuff and when you're putting photos on white walls. Um, okay, I don't know who this person is. But I put mine in photos. Where'd that go? There's so many random photos on this computer. I didn't think about that. I just got to it. Oh, okay. I'm gonna go click on the this section and basically lets you control like where you're getting all these photos from. So I put mine in pictures. Um, I put them under my name, which you can see here. So this is like a folder of all my photos that I've taken basically just this summer. Um, yeah, there's a few of me. Don't believe. We'll do a quick little scan. So you can go through and check and uncheck the photos that you want imported. Um, that one's already left. The right one is already edited. I tried to pick all the scenery ones from hiking this summer. We'll see how well that does. See, I see little people in this one. I think my roommates are in that one. We'll unclick that one for them. <laughs> this one's already edited. I'll leave it in there just so we can compare. Oh, there's me. Uncheck my sister. Ooh. 
I'm sure it's Okay. Basically, I'm just gonna go through and unclick all these fucking women. So many places. Oh, okay. And then I also left some fun ones in. Um, and this is, we'll wait till we open it. I don't see any other people. Okay. And then after you have all the photos that you want collected, you simply hit import. And they will do so. Um, from the city. Mm, I don't want that. That's a little too much for me. Okay. Um, so I'll tell you a quick little story break. Um, <laughs> this right before this semester started. So even though it was winter break, I like to call it summer because my brain can't comprehend that we had that long of a break in the winter. Anyways, right before spring of 2021 20, semester, my roommate came down to Georgia, which is where I live, and we ended up going to, um, ex exactly. I, I kept her friend in the entire break of summer. So we tried to have like a summer trip, you know? So she came down to Georgia um, with all protocols taken into place. She got tested, I got tested. Um, and then we went and drove to a little town that is near my house that I did not know um, called Mystic Falls. So I don't know if anybody's seen Vampire Diaries, but basically we went and we like drove around where they shot the show Vampire Diaries. It's actually Covington, Georgia, but they still have the sign saying Mystic Falls, Virginia. So that was really fun. We went and took pictures by like all the cast houses and all like the min big like scene places, um, including the bell tower and like Mystic Grill, which is where they go and eat in the show. So it was really fun to do that and just take a bunch of photos. It was very nice and it was a very nice day too so i got a lot of good ones it was a great trip winter summer break was a great time i also took pictures of these cats that was right outside of the main character's house so we'll see what what those look like okay so tangent over um yeah so it'll import now all the photos are in and this is what I'm talking about where it's organizing. So it like has them all labeled. Um, and if you get, see where you go over, it has like these little dots. And so you can like kind of rate your photos once you like them. So that was helpful basically when this summer I was doing my, like the senior photos for people, they could go through and basically like click the photos that they liked the most. And so those are the ones that I spent the most time on um, as well as like if you're editing multiple, you can just like the ones that you really like and then it'll like keep track of those. Um, but yeah, okay, so let's see, where should we get started? The confusing thing is I know that some of these already have edits on them from the mobile app. So, there's not much to do for the cat, let's do the cat though. Okay, see this one, 160, that one already has a filter over it because it's a little more orangey than the rest. So I've already edited that one. So let's go to 150 and compare. So you double click on the photo, it brings it up big. All the photos are kept down here. You hover over, it'll show you what the photo is in the top left section. Um, and then you can go ahead and start editing. So all of the main edits are on the right side over here. I know, I wish I got the name. I know the owner was right there next door. Look at how cute. Quick little tangent on the cat. Oh yeah, it kept looking back at us. It knew, it was working the camera. But yeah, okay, so let's see. Let's go start with this one that's already edited. It's a little blurry photo, but I thought the cat was cute. Um, okay, so, as you can see, it has, like, all of the co color overtones in this corner. <laughs> I honestly didn't even think about that. I'm mad, because I, I almost wanted to post this photo of the cat instead of anything else. It's the cat working the catwalk. Okay. <laughs> so, we have quick develop. 
that has your white balance, your tone control, exposure, clarity, vibrance, all that. Um, as you're editing these, it, you know, some of them are quite drastic. There is a reset button. And that's, mm, that's another thing about Lightroom. It will save your original photo so that basically, if you don't like an edit that you did, like you spent like 20 minutes, you just don't like it all, you want the original photo back, Lightroom will do that for you and it'll like convert everything and take everything off and it'll save your original photo. So like, and then it'll save the presets on top of that. Versus some other, other like programs, once you make a change to the photo, it'll like embed that into the original photo. And so then you can't really like go back and change it, which is why Lightroom is very, very helpful because say like I've made an edit and then like 10 years later, I just don't like it anymore how it looks. I like made it way too white. I can go back, get the original photo and then create how I want it. So fun, fun times. Okay. And then we don't have any keywords. Basically you can make, there's a lot of different um, settings in Lightroom and some that I just don't use because I don't need that. We don't, I'm not going to use keywording, keyword list. It's like you could tag cat in all the photos with a cat and then look for it and it'll pull up. Don't need that. Um, it gives you all of the information of this photo on literally tells me the camera that I took it on, my lens that I had attached, everything. And then comment so I can make something, but I don't want that. Um, why do I keep clicking that? Okay, so there's that. And then we don't need publishing services. I'm trying to think where. It's also been a good year since I used this. It's telling me where the folder is in, where I've like gotten these photos from. Um, you can make a collection. For now, we're just gonna leave them in previous imports because we don't need to. Um, you can zoom in, change the way. Zoom in on a little cat. Okay, oh, where'd I go? I like having that there. Okay, so we are in, why is that not? I want that to stay permanent. Okay. That's why, that's what was looking weird. So we're in the library currently, which makes sense. It gives us all the information from the photo. And that's why this is quick develop. So this gives you like the main things that people use. Not the main things, but like the biggest adjustments. Then you click on develop. And this is where the fun starts happening. So we're just gonna, um, this is where all the edits are. So it'll give you the, Oh, okay, so it does, it did save my. So it'll give you the history of what you've done to edit. So as you can see, I imported this photo and then I adjusted the photo to show you guys. I adjusted it three times so it shows you all those and then I reset the photo. So say you accidentally hit reset and you were like, didn't mean to do that. You go back, you're good, you're fine. And you're like, mm, no, I wanted the step before that. I accidentally hit too much. You're fine. Good things. Um. And then, oh, wait, so yeah. Okay, and then presets, as I was talking about, Lightroom has its own presets. So let's make this a very drastic kitty. Say, you know, look at that. Look at how it just changes the mood. Let's go. It has its own black and white presets. It does have a few color presets and all that. Personally, I don't love the color presets on here, but I do like the black and white because it gives you all different kinds. So like you can see this is more grayscale and then it gets darker. This one looks like the cat was like caught by a, you know, what are those people that like follow you around? They're taking all those photos. Little Veronica Mars. Basically, yeah. We have all of those. And then you can also do There's so many. Yes, a little like paparazzi or there's something. Okay, you can antique it, make it old. Cream tone, blue. 
And so also, as you can tell, like when I'm going over, it'll show you what the preset will look like on the photo in this little top corner. Oh, and the top corner, like if I want to zoom into the cat's face, I can use that box. And like this little box is what we're looking at. Look at him caught. Caught in the act. Looking good. Um, yeah. See, that one's not bad. Direct positive. And then when you do that, it does give you the settings of those presets on this right side. So like if you wanted to copy this in yourself and learn how they did it, that's how they did it. I'm trying to think of what else is like good to know. Oh, soft proofing, that's where it turns it light. You can have a before and after. So this is what the picture looked like before. This is what it looks like after we added some weird settings. Get rid of that. No. I don't want that. Oh no, go away, go away. Okay. Right? The before and after is very. Oh, yes. Oh. There's different ways to see it. But yeah. We just need, for now, we just need it like this. Um, okay, so let's get to editing a photo. Let's see where we, we'll start with at the beginning. I don't know. Okay. So, oh, real quick too, let's see if it'll, if it'll do this. No. Okay. Sometimes, depending on your account, it'll like show you where your picture is taken. I know that this one, I don't want slideshow. I didn't mean to click that. Oh no, I may have broken it. Let's go back to develop. Okay, so this is a waterfall somewhere in Georgia. Um, went there on my birthday and Father's Day same day so have fun trying to figure that out um but yeah okay so as you can kind of see like straight right away it's very wide up here um all of the water is the trees I personally I don't know I find this green is very very green compared to like the green that's down here um so, let's just try to make it look a little more professional. We'll see what we can do. Um, so these are your main, these are all, all your mains. That's not the right word. These are all your edits, basically. We've got exposure, contrast, highlight, shadows, whites, and blacks. Personally, I like to make photos a little on the lighter side. I like to make them light and airy is like I guess the proper terms for how I like my photos to look um, I don't like the dark drastic tones so where I typically start off um, is not even with the temperature but with the whites I like to lower lower the whites um, it makes the photo darker and gives it a nice like effect and kind of makes it just look more professional versus if you up the whites, it's too too much. So I like to lower the whites either all the way sometimes or like one third of the way. Blacks, it really depends on the photo. I personally like, um, I don't know. Oh yeah, there's also key tricks that you can use, um, the plus or minus, which is very helpful because dragging sometimes you, you can overshoot. So I like to brighten the blacks depending on the photo um, because that's what happens if you make it too dark so and I want this a little brighter and it brings out the corner um, sides so you can kind of see more of the rocks in this photo so we'll just up that all the way shadows let's see what it looks like 
Mm, okay, so how I was saying I want to see more of the sides, I'm gonna up the shadows so that you don't have as many. And then if I wanted to create more of like a, there's a word and it starts with a V. Whenever I wanted to create more of like a darker effect on the sides and around the photo, I would definitely lower the shadows. And that way it focuses more on the waterfall. But I don't want that. I wanna see more of the waterfall. I like the sides, I want the whole photo. Um, this also helps when you take like a photo in a really dark place and some things are hidden but you really wanna see them in the photo. You up the shadows, you can see a lot more. Highlights, I typically lower them. Um, not that much. I think it makes the photo look darker and it looks a little nicer. Um, when you raise them, again, like it just brings attention to the whites, so it really kind of overpowers the photo. I don't like to lighten them a lot, I just mess with a few. You don't always have to mess with all of these two. Like sometimes I leave the lights, highlights alone, I leave blacks alone, and I'll just mess with like the shadowing. Um, exposure, sometimes I don't even touch because with all the other edits, it gets too much. Um, this one, I don't want to darken it, I don't believe, but we can see in the end. The yeah, exposure is basically the brightness of the photo. Um, I think the oh, maybe that will look better. Um, temperature. Now, so the temperature key basically does as it says. Where it like basically puts. There's a better way to say this, but your two temperatures are hot, cold. You've got cold, which is typically associated with blue, and you got hot, which is like the red and oranges. So temperature kind of takes your photo and puts like either a blue or a orangey like hue to the entire photo. I like my photos to look like icy, more white. So if you want more white, then you typically will go to the left towards the blues. If you want a more like sunny, bright day, then you will go to the right. Yeah, I don't know my left right. You'll go to the right. So, um. With this one, since we have green, I don't want it to be more blue. Um, I kind of want to use more of the right side to bring out the oranges and everything and make it look like it was a really bright and sunny day. It was, but because of the trees, the photo didn't capture that as well. Capture. Um, because look, if you went to the left, now it looks more like a twilight photo where it's kind of like rainy and cloudy. And I don't want that. Um, we'll keep it at five. If you go too much. Then you start looking a little sepia. <laughs> well, too much. Um, we'll go to like 20. I think that looks good. Um, another thing, so when you do that, it change it's changing like all of these up here. So you can edit using this um, chart, but I just find that way too difficult. So I'm not going to. The histogram is very helpful when it comes to like minor details. Um, yes. Okay. You also do with Lightroom, you have these tools, which like is what raw therapy doesn't have. You have your cropping overlay so we can crop it. You have spot removal. So say like there was a literal human just standing like right here, someone's foot. I could easily just like remove that and take like this rock over here and put it over there. Um, red eye correction it explains itself. You have a graduated filter, so we might end up using this in the end to kind of like take away the light, the white from up here, but keep it down here. And then you also have, oh, I didn't mean to actually hit that. You have your radial filter, so it kind of like, again, does like a ombre effect when you're editing. And then the adjustment brush, um, it just does as it says, yeah. So like, it can adjust one little section without adjusting the whole photo, but yeah, we don't want that. That's too bright. And so I can just control Z. I don't want that. Okay. So I actually don't, I think it's too bright, the temperature I'm looking at it right now. We're gonna bring it back down to like five. Uh, yeah. Oh, also, okay. 
don't know why I was saying it like a secret. Um, but yeah, talking about raining cloudy days, I saw that it was supposed to snow tomorrow, and I'm very excited. If it's gonna rain, like bring snow. Come on. I'm very. Uh, can't wait. I don't want to miss this right now. Okay, split toning. Love split toning. I know. I literally, I didn't realize that it was going to, um, to snow until I got like a message from the school saying inclement weather or whatever after 10 o'clock. And I was like, ooh, why? And I went and looked it up. Um, okay, let's actually do color first. So the next section we're gonna mess with is the color. I love this. Yeah, also I hope that it doesn't just snow and then go away. I hope that it doesn't just like snow and then disappear literally by 12 o'clock the next day like it did the first time. So, fingers crossed. There's some, some tea going on. Um, okay, but basically, so we're gonna go to color. Um, we're gonna skip tone curve for now. The color section um, takes exactly what it does, where it you can mess with one color specifically in the photo. So it gives you the option to mess with your hue, saturation, or luminance, which I always say feel like I'm saying wrong. Um, and yeah, I think the best way to explain them is honestly just by using them. We don't have any red in this photo, so. If you try to like lower the saturation saturation of red, nothing's gonna happen because there's nothing lower. Hue though is more of like a photo kind of like the whole thing. Um, but again, there's nothing. Same, nothing. So that's no fun. Let's start with the green. Yeah, let's start with the green. Um, so the green. Let's see what messing. We completely like take out the green, make it look very dark, gross, or we could really go for it and just point out that there's green in this photo. Um, and if we did that, but we didn't like how like bright it looks, then you can kind of mess with like the luminance and make it like darker, but low key kind of makes it start looking fake and doesn't look that good in my opinion. And then you can mess with the hue, which then changes like the, well, exactly what I'm saying, the hue of that color. So you can make it like super green because that totally looks real. Or you can be like, oh, we were there in fall. Yeah, when there was still a bunch of things on the tree. So you've got some options. I think what we will do, first let's put the hue back to normal, luminance back to normal. Um, Depends on the direction you want to take with this photo. I think we can make the green pop a little bit more. I don't want to mess with hue, I want to mess with saturation. Um, I think right there looks about good. Now I could be wrong, and if so, we'll come back. It also, once we mess with the yellows and the oranges, that will change a lot the effect that the color is having, like the, the way that it's being shown. So green hue, I personally do not want it to look like that, so we're gonna decrease it instead of increase. I also don't want it to look like that. I think we might just leave it at like two, three, two. Two's better. Luminance, I normally like to brighten it a little bit more um, yeah, I think that for right now looks decent. Um, that is one thing you got to keep in mind is that as you're going along, these colors will change with every color that you use. So although like this section kind of looks a little very green and kind of fake, it will change. I didn't mean to do that, but whatever. Okay. So then we go to yellow because yellow and green are definitely the most related in terms of when you're editing the colors. AKA, when you take the hue of the yellow, it will also change the color of these trees. 
Now, as you can tell, especially when you go here, like it's mainly just changing like the outside. It's not messing with this inside section because that is green and it knows that, but those other ones are like borderline. So, don't want to do that. Right? Okay. Um, the yellow. The yellow, also the saturation is gonna affect this photo a lot because we upped the temperature. I have no idea how to spell kaleidoscope, but I knew exactly what you meant. <laughs> Um, yeah, so if we up the luminance, it's gonna make it very bright. I don't think we should downplay it a little. <laughs> yeah, okay, I think we're right there. I don't know, something looks a little off right here. Let's see, let's mess with the orange a little. If we raise. The best way to the I see no because each dip photo is different so you're not going to know like what adjusting the orange hue is going to do so I just full on normally like will grab it and I'll go all the way to the left see what it looks like and all the way to the right and so like I'm seeing it's not really changing or affecting this photo so I don't really have to use that saturation isn't either either is the luminance so those I'm just gonna leave alone I'm gonna go back to the yellow or to the green I think I'm gonna lower the saturation. I think it's a little way too high. And then go to the hue. Um, and maybe, maybe it's the luminance, yeah. I think we just gotta darken the leaves a little. Okay, and then, so we have red, orange, yellow, green, aqua, blue, violet, and what's this last one? Magenta. Those are the colors that you get to mess with that are in all photos. So the blue, you normally want to pay attention to, obviously, you know, for the sky. This is where I'm looking at along with this whole section to see if that changes at all when I'm changing the blue color. Right? Love the colors. And you got and you don't wanna you need colors in photos, so I'm glad it lets you change all of them. Okay, so blue sometimes is my favorite. We're gonna put it like here ish. If you look at this like top corner, this is what we're mainly affecting right now, so it'll like go purple. And then it'll bring like a green line and that's when you know that you've just over you've overdone it you've over edited this photo now has this random line because this blue is not supposed to be in this photo so you want to kind of get a photo that's like better fit to a color that's better fit to that whole section and we can also just like lower the saturation or bring it out but i think lowering it for now because we don't really want to pay attention to the blue sky Magenta and purple are pretty hard to like mess with because they're not really in a lot of photos, so we'll leave them be. Moving on to all these guys. Saturation, good fun. Hue, highlights, all that. So basically, when we had done the highlighting earlier, this is like more in detail of what we've already done. So, I really don't want to mess with them. I we need to too much for this photo as you can tell it's not making much of an edit now you can because now we're getting all spooky or not even spooky that's just like old timey I'll put it right there I think maybe we can mess no I don't want to mess the highlights but the shadows looks the best balance to see it's more orangey more blue, orange, blue, orange, blue. Um, we'll put it in the middle. Details. Okay, so the details part. See when you zoom in, very pixelated. Now, this is like where it comes to sharpening. 
as you can see it added it's very grainy now I do not like that don't think that that looks good don't want my photos to look like that so I never use sharpening I have before if I like if the photo does look almost like blurry or hazy I've used it to kind of like crispen it up but other than that you really don't really you don't really don't really you don't really need to use sharpening very small circumstances in my opinion um, noise reduction kind of blurs things together so it's like it's kind of to get rid of all the pixels like you know the noise in the photo um, so as you can see like when I raise it it gets super blurry there um, I don't we don't need to mess with that really either it's only when I guess it's very it's helpful in situations like this where you have these like blue sh sharp lines you can kind of blur them and they're less sharp so they're less obvious but we do not need to do that for this photo in my opinion um that was details lens corrections we're not going to touch on this you can do different things but my lens was fine <laughs> um we're also not going to change how the photo the cropping of the photo right now um this is more kind of in terms of like the sharpening and making the photo look um, higher quality almost. You can add actual grain. No, we're not doing that. You can dehaze the photo. Typically don't use that either. Um, this kind of like sharpens it basically. And then there you go, it adds haze. So we just don't wanna do that. Um, yeah I normally will not, don't touch those camera calibration we don't really need um, my camera was just fine it's like if your camera's off or if you have different settings on your camera and you want to like change what it what it had done um, I don't I don't know you can kind of capture like different greens actually maybe this might maybe we'll have fun with this let's see Oh, I don't want to increase that. We're on a different setting on the keyboard. Okay. There you go. So I like that green, but obviously not that green. I think that looks. This is like orangey yellow green on the leaves. So right now we're looking at the leaves of the tree. I like this that looks right there okay so now ooh. um okay when I look at this I still see that it kind of looks like yellowy um I don't want that we're not gonna mess with the tone curve so I'm gonna lower the temperature that was used oh I can't tell I think six looks better, or zero. Um, but then I'm gonna go back to my colors and mess with the green and lower the saturation just a little. Right there. And then let's try this little tool out for this one. So see how this is still like a very bright white patch don't want it that white so i haven't used this one in a while so basically i'm going to grab the gradual effect and i'm going to put it going straight down now you can edit and it will take these edits that you do and it'll apply them in that top section and then it'll like kind of half them apply them to the second section so that it's a gradual transition of the edits so to get rid of that white, I need to lower my white, not that much, and like lower the contrast up there. Oh man, I'm editing something else again. Okay. Hello. See how it's like very dark. Now it's very bright. I 
need to stop editing that. I need to get a new exposure. Oh well. Um, that low key doesn't look too bad. So I'm trying to figure out basically which one is going to best help get rid of that little white spot. Just not even get rid. It just oh black's definitely. Okay, so we're gonna lower the black, lower the white just a little. Yeah. You can do the colors too, but we it's fine. So here's our photo for now. Um Let's look at a before and after. Ta-da! So, we have our before on the left, our after on the right. Um, basically, we have on the right here a very much lighter photo to where you can see all the rocks of the waterfall. You can see the detail in the rocks. Um, the trees are a little more yellowy, so it looks more like the sun was shining on them versus here you could see that the sun was coming from behind but this one it kind of looks like the sun's coming towards it um but yeah so these are the two different edits i thank you i think that the right side looks better too <laughs> um it definitely changes the whole mood of the photo and you just get to see a lot more so in terms of like <sighs> what's the word like nature photos you don't really need to change a lot of the coloring. I know that we did just because I was talking about it, but I really like using Lightroom to just bring more attention back to like what you were trying to photograph because it's hard sometimes. Like this was a photo taken on a hike. We got to the top. I had my camera, so I took some photos. And it's hard though to like get the right lighting and get the right angles and all that when you were just hiking in the middle of the day and you just wanted a photo. Um, and so a lot of times that's why I like editing is because you can just take a photo in the moment and then just fix it later versus when I'm trying to take photos of people, a lot of times you try to get that edit in real life, which is also very fun, but just makes life a lot more harder and more difficult is the better word because then you have to like wake up at the crack of dawn, and make sure you get the lighting and make sure that you're at the right angle to like hide the light behind the tower, all these different things. Or you can just snap a photo and put all that in later. There are also, oh, that's, you can edit sun flares onto some photos. That's my favorite. Here's a left and right version. So yeah. Okay, and then let's see if I remember how to do this properly. So, say you took like a bunch of photos in the woods that look just like this. And I want this photo now to be bright like this photo. But I don't want to spend my time again doing, going through all of the settings to try and make it look right. So what you can do is you hit the little plus button on the presets. We'll name this tree, except I can't, tree, um, actually we'll name it howdy trees because there we go. Hee <laughs> hee. Um, yeah, it's say like you didn't like you specifically put the saturation up for that photo specifically, you can unselect that and it won't save that. You can go through and just change different things. Um, it's not going to take the gradual, graduated filters, which is fine by me. I don't, we don't need that. So like that layer that we did. Um, put it into the user presets folder. Sometimes you can create new folders and like have those under different names. So I have like graduation photos, nature photos, and then presets in those different folders. It all depends on what you like. And then you hit create. And then you can go click on this next photo. And all you have to do is apply it. And we're done. How easy. So take it off, click the button, and we're good. Yeah, and like that looks great. And then you go to the next one. You hit that one. Boom. Look at that. The next one boom <laughs> a lot of fun and so like then from here you basically take these photos so like 
That was the before and after. I will say before the water looked cooler. So let's say we wanted that effect kind of back. Um, like I'm not, I don't like how bright this one is. Um, this one's kind of a cool photo. It's like cut halfway. So when applying this preset, it basically just applied the same filters that you put on the last one onto this one. So you can go through and now like I will change the whites. I don't want it to be as bright. So I'm going to add some whites back. so that you can see more of the water effect. Oh, no, 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 like right there. Um, and then we'll take the blacks to put right there. Uh, what else can we do? Maybe we will lower the exposure a little bit. No, I think up, mm, like that. And then also, if I want the effect more on here, there's definitely a way. So you can take, okay, so basically what we're gonna do is take this adjustment brush and lower the exposure and put it over where it's like too bright in my opinion. Um, and it will just apply that right there. So. Maybe I made that too dark. Um, and then you can kind of like take that like shape that I just made by clicking around and I can move it. So if I, like I, I don't like how white that is. So I do like that this filter over. Plus you get to see more of the water. So I think right there looks good. And then you just unslip that and it'll bring you back to the beginning. Ta-da. Okay, let's do a white balance on a photo. So, those were the trees. Um, okay. Anybody know what this is? I'll ask that. It was under construction when we went this summer. Here, I'll give you some different angles. Um, I really like this photo. I think we'll we'll edit this one. Um, yeah, it's the Parthenon in Nashville, Tennessee. Also, fun tangent. Um, so okay, the when we went on this road trip was beginning of July. Yeah, um, and this is the Parthenon. So this is in Centennial Park in Tennessee, and this was picture was taken almost a, I think it's either like exactly a week or a few days before Taylor Swift released that she was like or announced that she was releasing folklore and I love Taylor Swift she is everything cannot wait for fearless anyways in her song um oh my gosh I can't even think about it with the string invisible string in the song invisible string um she mentions green is the color of the grass at Centennial Park, and it's this park specifically. And green is the color of the grass. And that was supposed to be my Instagram caption, but I forgot. But yeah, that was a fun fact. <laughs> yeah, this one's definitely not the actual one. Um, although this one, honestly, wasn't doing too well when we were there. They're definitely trying to help beef it up. Um, but yeah, I also just watched Percy Jackson, and they go to this in that movie, I don't remember if we're in the book. But yeah, okay. So, we're gonna mess with this one a little bit. And this one is the perfect, we've got a little Vanderbilt football player working out here. I don't want him in my photo. So, let's remove him. Um, basically, okay, so that's that one. Why is that peak doing that? No. Basically. Okay. So, we're going to try to take him out. Good. I'm glad you like this. 
There's a definitely another way to do. No, come on. I don't know why it's blurring it so much. There's definitely. Oh, here, feather. I don't want that. Pull some grass from over here. What? Oh, we don't want that one. We want this over here. know that this is a very splotchy job, but it'll be fine because we're going to zoom out soon. Ah, you can do that. I do know, but we don't want that. Basically, these are just going to look like things now in the grass. So, it's a little messy. I, there's definitely a better way to do this. But still, he's not there anymore, so like that's fun. Um, let's see, let's delete all of these because let's do it the other way too. You can basically drag, ah, no, you can do that, but. Mm. No computer program is without its flaw. Okay. So, let's see what it does itself. Oh, that's awful. Why would it do that? <laughs> this is where I like Photoshop because Photoshop, I would be able to directly take like this patch of grass and just put it over here. I don't want this top part. Oh, clone. There we go. I knew there was a way to do it. We'll keep the dog. There's a little puppy over there. Um, there's definitely a way, yeah. Wait, no, I want to make it smaller. There we go. And then we'll take some of, maybe we'll take like a whole little thing section. Oh, okay. See what it did there. We'll put that over. I need to make that smaller. No, we could just leave the top part and see who catches that. Oh no, we don't want that. We want this side. Let's see, what else? There's just that one little bit. Let me take this one. Just apply that right there. Okay, that should look better. Let's see. Okay, better. The man's be gone. Ta-da. He does still have his little doggo. We'll, leave, we'll let the dog stay. Um, yeah. So look, before and after. Man? No man. Love that. It's so fun. Okay. See, look how fun that was. He's there. He's gone. Anyways. Ugh. Time of my life. Um, okay, so editing, let's see, what direction do we want to go in this photo? Um, actually, let me pull up, I have some different things saved on my phone presets, so let's kind of copy one of those. Um, let's see, what kind do we want? I think I actually have this photo, so let's see how I edited um, that's another thing, is that sometimes the phone preset, like, settings do not correlate to Lightroom. Hello, welcome. We're editing people out of photos. Um, well, we were. Actually, we could probably go ahead and do more. 
because I also don't like this sign. It's a little distracting. So let's see if we can maybe get rid of the grass or cover, let, let the grass get rid of. One of them. What is going on here? Let's just get rid of that one. So, there. Oh, no, just kidding. I'll find, I'll get used to it one day. Definitely done this a different way too. We do have Photoshop, but for today's little funness, <laughs> I'm using Lightroom because I mainly want to edit photos, but I'm going to use Lightroom as my Photoshop for now to get rid of things that I didn't want in these photos. Oh no, 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 no. So we'll leave that border. We'll see if it looks weird or not. Yeah, okay. So we're getting rid of the sign too. So now let's go ahead and try to edit the photo. Um, where is it? I have the edit that I did for this photo exactly on my phone. So let's see how using those numbers changes this photo. Um, I kind of, the goal of this is to just make it brighter. Um, you could tell that it was a cloudy day and I don't want that. I want to trick people into thinking that it was sunny. So we're going to up the exposure to 0 0.42. Um, that's another fun thing that I like to do about Lightroom is you can just type in the numbers if you already have a number in your mind. Um, 7, we'll make the contrast. We'll put negative 100 as the highlight. Just take them all out. Um, for now, yeah, we'll take them out and then we'll see how it looks. whites we are going to cool down as well um and you can see it's kind of bringing back i can point it's kind of bringing back when i took out the white more of the um blue that was in the sky that day i did too i really just like this photo how it's set between the trees um we were just, there's a little lake right outside, or a little like one mile track oak around this pond. So we were walking. Um, and then I thought that this over here was the best place to take a photo of the whole thing. Cause you're gonna get too, too much over here cause of all the geese. Geese do. Okay. Um, color. So we've got, we'll do, we'll go color by color first. Ah. Okay, red, can't tell if this is, I don't know where it is. Oh well, we're gonna keep going with it for now. Um, red, we're gonna knock down the hue to negative 47. We're going to put the saturation to negative 26. This one to negative 64. Now, that doesn't really change much for this photo. I believe that it was just the preset, the numbers that I had on the preset that I had used for this. Um, and then since it, like, 
didn't have any, you know, I didn't, I didn't go through and change it. So negative six, negative 15, negative 20, negative six. For the yellows, negative 64, negative 39, and then we'll keep the luminance the same. Greens, these numbers are definitely what changes this photo the most, plus 15, because there's so much of the green in this photo. Um, we're going to lower the saturation, negative 27, and I think we'll lower the luminance as well, negative 34. Kind of balances it out better. Um, the blues, we will do negative 71 plus 90. So we're really going to try and like pull that blue out down here, as you can kind of see how it just like flipped. Um, and then negative 39. Now on to blue. Negative 37 plus 86. Um, negative 46. So it's definitely changing. It's definitely not the same on my phone versus here. Let me tell you that. Um, but we're getting somewhere. Now it's time for like, where'd it go? Okay, see on the phone, the temperature is more with the colors. So we wanna change the temperature to plus 18, AKA, we'll put, just click on that, we'll do that. Um, the temperature for this photo does a lot. I noticed that when I was editing it. It completely changes it. Like, look at how it is, zero with the regular temperature. You bump it up and it looks so much better. So we'll leave it at 20 for now. I think 25 is too much. Um, it makes the greens look normal. It makes the blue look normal. Cause it just brings so much light to the photo to where if it was like that green of a, or that blue of a sunny day and that green was there, it sun balances out the colors. So that's fun. Um, you mess with the tint, let's see. We'll mess with it just a tad. We'll leave it at five. Hmm. Let's see what else I had done for this. I think this is it. I normally don't mess I didn't mess with too much, especially on these. Um let's see. The photo on my phone looks a little clear trying to think of where I think maybe the brightness is different on the computer oh no oh we're good we're good <laughs> there is definitely a way oh no 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 I don't know if it's changing the color on your as a screen but it basically just made mine orange um, okay, I don't know, the picture, ah, sorry. Picture's looking dark. So, this is when you have to kind of change from, your phone has like those LED backlights on the screen versus a computer does not. Um, yeah. <laughs> I don't think editing a picture with an orange screen already on top is going to do the best for me. So, let's try and fix this now. So, this is basically what we got from my phone. Um, I don't know about you guys, but I think it's still looking a little too dark. So we're going to go to the exposure, which you could also edit through here. Um, we'll do that. So this is the histogram. So this basically is like where all the colors overlay. Going to the right, you're upping it. Pull, you can pull up. Um, going to the left, you're obviously lowering it. I think right there looks a little better. trying to get that perfect little balance. I think right here, this looks better, at least for me. Um, I also kind of wanna, I think this one we will mess with the detailing. Um, so we'll make the photo a little sharper, not that much sharper. Just because we got a close up of this tree and everything so we want to sharpen it, make it look a little clearer. You can also change the sharpening. 
thing um, on the radius like of the little pixels, all that. We're not gonna mess with it. We're fine. The noise reduction, I really don't want to mess with. I think that that's just gonna make it look a little too mm, not crisp enough. <laughs> okay, and then I don't think that we need to dehaze the photo. Not that way, if anything. Yeah. Okay, actually, yeah. I think upping the dehaze a little bit adds some nice features. So, this is where we're at now. Um, I do want to go back and look at the green. I think that we could mess. Actually, I don't know, because of the grass. If anything, I'd want to lower it just a tad. Okay, yeah, that looks good. So we're gonna lower that. I think that might have been the same number over there, yeah. But, I don't know, what do you guys think? Anything else that you see from this photo? I think it looks pretty good. We'll put on the before and after. So, this is before, after. I don't know what that's doing. Um, oh no. It's basically not letting us see it before and after anymore. <laughs> oh, I, so sometimes I edit photos of me and my two sisters. Um, one of my sisters is very tan. Um, and me and my other sister are nowhere near as tan as her. So editing photos of us three together, especially during the summer, is really fun because I will try to be changing like the orange in the color and it'll make her either like bright orange and literally look, and it'll like make me and my sister look tan and then make her look like an Oompa Loompa. But there was one time and I do not know what I used but it turned her specifically, my oldest sister, purple and left me and my other sister like looking normal. I have no idea what went wrong, but it literally had her doing perp like looking purple. So I ended up posting it with the, or I didn't post it. I sent it in our family group chat and was said like flying purple people eater because it's what she looked like. But yeah, so you definitely can make things purple even when you don't mean to. And then I had no way of changing it back because I had zero clue how I did that. But yeah, there's some soft proofing. It looks better with the white, I think. So if you were like to add a color background, I would definitely add white to make the colors pop. It like makes the, that part pop. But yeah, okay, here, before, after. Much brighter, happier, no random white sign, no random mans. I'm pretty sure he's a Vanderbilt, or uh, not a Vanderbilt. Who, what's Tennessee's football team? Tennessee Titans. I believe he was a football player. Um, okay, so let's get that. We just did all that work of this photo. <laughs> right? Okay. Let me, I was trying to think of a name for this. We'll name it strolling. I would also rather be strolling around in a bright, happy, sunny day. Um, create. Go over here. Put it on there. Wow. Amazing. <laughs> um, not really. It's definitely can be improved in the sense of like, this is a filter to make it look good more towards like Instagram. If you are editing photos, say for like genuine photography, an edit like this is not what you would be going for. Um, but we're not doing that. Um, also, so this is like kind of how we got here. Now looking, this is the filter that we did on the trees and the waterfall. See how like every, like based on the colors that you have in your photo, the filter, there's a filter for everything. Um, which is why I like saving all of mine because sometimes I'll get photos that are very similar to each other. So I'm like, oh, I can just copy and paste that over. But there's other times where you really just need to create a new filter. 
Um, let's see what this looks like on like the ones without the trees too. Not bad, not bad. Definitely can be improved. Yeah, not bad. It's much brighter. It brings a lot more light, which is how I personally like to edit photos. So there we go. This was a random gas station I took. Dang, gas was two thirty nine already in the summer. Don't remember that. Didn't go anywhere this summer really. This, oh yes, let me clarify that all of these pictures were taken where we only ever saw each other and we only ever went to places that were outdoors when we had, we had to drive to Colorado to meet my sister, so. Oh, I took a picture because there was a white castle. My uncle loves that. Um, these clouds are very fluffy, so are these. I got some good clouds these days. Oh, here's like Nashville, downtown Nashville. There's the AT&T building. There's someone's stadium. Or is that, maybe that's, that kind of looks like a top golf. I think, oh yeah, there's the stadium right here. Let's see what else we got. Uh, oh, Illinois. Here's where we entered Illinois at. Um, also, here's Clucky, our rubber chicken. Okay, I'm trying to find a good photo for us. Debra stand table. We went hiking on one of our little trips one, one day. Ooh, this photo. I love this photo. Okay, so we went on a hike called Devil's, Devil's Sand Table. Um, and, or actually, is it this one? I think it's this one. Yes. Um, and basically, there were all these, like, really cool rock figures. Um, so, yes, Clucky is our rubber chicken in the family. We all have one. He lives in my sister's car. My Clucky, I don't know where he is, but my dad doesn't need to know that. Um, Clucky's the best member of the family, by far. There's also this photo we could edit of Clucky. Took that specifically of him. Let's do this one, it's more a change of scenery, you know? Cause you see this photo and you're like, there's not much to edit, but there is. You can basically make this one look um, a lot like darker. So let me pull up what I have already previously done for that one. Um, to kind of like have a cool effect. So I have the light. Go back to basic. I always like to start with exposure and temperature. Temperature normally is my like number one go-to because it can just completely change a photo and then you don't really have to do much else. Um, like yeah, we'll up the temperature. And try to create like a good little like sunny, warm day for, the, for all of these photos. Um, okay, so exposure we're gonna put at 42 plus 42. Plus 0.42, sorry. Very finicky. We'll do plus seven. Highlights will do minus 100. Shadows, we will do negative 37. See, the shadows here make a good difference, um, especially because we are in the car. Um, whites, we're just gonna remove. Blacks, we're gonna just lower a little bit. Um, Clarity, don't think I'm gonna really mess with clarity. Temperature, I had set at 18, um, but we're gonna leave it at 20. At 25 here. Uh, I really don't mess with vibrance and saturation that much, I won't lie. Um, yes, they do a lot. I just don't like sometimes how it looks. I think, personally, I would rather just go in and edit by color. Um, if anything, take out the sat. I like to lower the saturation. Um, yeah, okay. So let's do some coloring. This is definitely what takes the longest, I think, is going in by each color and affecting how all those look. Um, there is a little bit of red. 
in this photo if you want to look like at clucky and is this better maybe yeah there's some red here red too sometimes can be a very tricky color to edit because it'll go very bright and then very low clucky just chilling it probably has really bad neck problems after this car ride Maybe I'll bring him in one day, if I can find mine. This photo is much clearer and better quality than the others. I think the other ones didn't transfer over as raw files, which is a little trick that editing, you want to take your photos in the raw because it creates a good effect. Green, ooh, we turned Clucky a new color. Minus 27, minus 34, aqua, the aqua is kind of more of like the, my dad's shoulder shirt area, negative 19, negative 23, plus 25. Blue, like the sky and down here. Zooming out to some first wave rock, Blondie Rapture. Oh, actually, that's, that's a good song. Good band. Okay, so, ta-da! This is what we have now. Um. I'm glad. I wish we could play music here. <sighs> oh well. Okay. Anyways, here's before and after. So, before it was a fine photo. Nothing was really like wrong with it, but it, if you were gonna like put in a catalog, not good enough. Um, after, so main things that we did, increase the temperature. Um, so basically like I want it to have that like road trip look um, and like have that idea of words are so hard but basically I wanted it to be brighter and I wanted it to look more like a road trip versus just like a photo taken um, I think that this is what does but yeah so there's him at nighttime. So actually, this edit I really like. So what we're gonna do is, we're gonna save it. We'll do, we'll call it road trip. <laughs> and if I can type, the mouse is like over. Okay, and create. So now, I think this actually was the same. I was very proud of myself this summer. I created, yeah, perf, look at that. Okay, so this was like the, my favorite preset that I used on like majority of the photos for this. Um, and once I had done it, it saved me so much time because I did not have to edit every single photo. Um, but basically, this is what it looks like. So here is, um, what was it? I think this was Devil Sand Table, or maybe it was just like a part of. Um, but yeah, so I just went ahead and pasted on the preset that we just made with Clucky. Um, here's the before and after. It pulls out the greens. So if you want to like go look specifically at it, um, you're pulling out like the saturation and the darkness of the greens because if you can kind of see the green like almost reflects onto the rock and the boulders itself. Um, and then also, a big thing that I found out was messing with the hue of the yellow really affects the green. So by lowering the hue, you're kind of like pushing it away from the green and more towards that like orangey base of the whole photo, which is the color, like the more of what I like. Um, we didn't really have to mess with the oranges too much because the yellow kind of did all the work for us. It did all the heavy lifting. Um, it's at negative 64 now, but like see if you go all the way to the 60, it, it doesn't look good. So negative 64 
and we save and tap. Um, and then, let's see, what else? Let's just paste it on a bunch. Uh, here's like it from before I had zoomed in. This is what strolling looked like. It's definitely brighter, more orangey based because of the Parthenon. And then here is what the trees from the waterfall, which doesn't look as good because we messed a lot with the blacks and whites in that photo to make the water pop and like be more visible. In this, we don't have water, so we don't really need to mess with the blacks and whites as much as we did before. Um, so road trip, definitely the best one. It really just like changes how a photo looks and I appreciate it. I really like too the coloring of the blue. Honestly, I was just sitting in the car because we had been driving for like three days at that point, just messing with all the colors until I'd come up, finally like liked how I liked this photo to look. Um, this is also another favorite of mine. Look at how good it looks with the edit. Wow. <laughs> um, I really just appreciate this photo. This one is one of my favorites from that. I think this is the stand table, now that I think about it, or stand table. Um, but yeah. So let's go ahead and put this sucker on a bunch. Um, I don't want before and afters anymore, just like before. These, not all these are good photos. You know, sometimes you win some and then sometimes you just take random ones. Um, okay. Oh, this was overlooking. So on our drive back, we went and stopped off at a, not even drive back, it was driving out. Uh, you could see, I forget what it was. It was kind of like a water tower almost at the top. And so it had this at the very, we went and climbed up. And look how good it looks with that. And this down here is like a pool for kids in the summer. Obviously it was empty. Um, but yeah. Oops, somebody's using that. Okay, and then these are my parents. Um, and this photo, and there is a photo of a map somewhere, I will find it, are some of my favorite photos. But right here, you can see, like, the effect again of just adding that yellow and the orange. It really, like, changes the entire mood of the photo. That's a good word for it. Um, it, like, took out the yellowy, like, grossness and added... A bright change it on if anything this one probably is too orangey um so we could go and we could change that with the hue of the yellow maybe add it I think right there yeah there's quacksters there's quacky again here is, oh, I forgot, what is this called? Wow, it's a national landmark, though. I know that. Ugh, anybody out there? I do not know what this is. I cannot remember for the life of me. Oh my gosh, it was so cool. It was definitely bigger than I thought. It is in Kansas, I believe. Oh, okay. Um, let's see, let's see. I know, I know it. <laughs> and this is bad that I forgot it. Okay. It is called, and that's not it. What? It's in Illinois. Not that, okay. Let's Google this. Illinois. Ring. It's not a ring. That's so... Wow. I'm so sorry. Maybe it's not Illinois. I thought it was Kansas. I think it is. Maybe it's in Iowa? No. Hmm. You know, you win some, you lose some. I think we're just gonna have to not know where this was. <laughs> Anyways, that's important. Um, it's really cool. You can go inside. That's the thing that I didn't know about this. Um, obviously, like I've seen it in history books and everything, 
But what I never knew is that at the top up here is like you can go inside and write it and they have little windows up here. It was created for the world, one of the um, exploration, not exploration fairs. Jeez, but yeah. Anyways, that's that. Um, and this is like the little park that's right behind it. Uh, oh, it's in Kansas. Whatever, whatever's by Kansas. Let's see what landmarks are in Kansas, everyone, because that's just really sad. Oh wait, no, Kansas City Chiefs aren't in Kansas. So what am I saying? They're in. Hold on, we're gonna find this out. Missouri. St. Louis, Missouri is where this was. Okay, I have, what is that thing called though? The Gateway Arch. It's called the Gateway Arch. Nah, that's not the name yet. That's not what I was thinking of, that it was called for some reason. Anyways, that's the giant arch. Um, more photos of Clucky, started getting dark. Okay, yes. And then we went to the National World War I Museum, a memoriam. Um, Oh, I wanted to see if we could edit this photo because I wanted to edit this photo specifically because of how dark it was that day. It was started literally pouring rain on us right as we got there. Um, but we had just driven for five days. We weren't about to not see it. Um, okay, out of all of these. Ooh, okay, so strolling. So the one, this one best looks or makes this photo look best. Um, now, obviously, this isn't ideal. That's not exactly how we want it because that clearly is too fake. But what we can do is we can start now with this preset and then edit this preset to fit this photo's coloring better. So we'll go to the blues. Um, I think we should lower it a little bit. Okay, yeah, we need to brighten the luminance. Uh, yeah. Um, maybe even where shadows. Take off the shadows. Hide some highlights. Uh, we this is a great example of what we can use. The noise reduction. Um, so we kind of want to blur too much, but we do want to blur that background. Oh, okay, that just like blurred. I think that looks decent. But yeah, that doesn't look too bad. Um, maybe change the coloring a little or the temperature. It makes it a little fake. I think. I think I actually think that's where we started. Anyway, so yeah. That looks pretty good. Um, another tool that I really like to use that we haven't gotten the best picture for um, is this white balance. Um, but it has like a literal picker. So I'm gonna use this kind of area to like make the white balance and it'll offset all the colors in this photo. So, ta-da, it makes it look more, it brings it back more to like real tone and what it's actually supposed to look like so it's basically saying that like hey yo this area is supposed to be like white but it's throwing off the ho whole photo so it'll automatically adjust the temperature and the tint to make it look more like normal so yeah water break okay so that's that photo and this is the before and after of it so you can actually see it doesn't look like it was raining and pouring buckets on us. I think it looks good. We're looking chill. Okay, next photo. Let's try to find. Oh, th where's the stop sign photo? I love this. This one. I like this photo a lot. I don't, cannot explain to you why. We'll go back. Um, It's just rolling rolling through yeah that is why 
So presets to me are the most helpful thing of Lightroom because the fact that you can just edit one photo and then s and like I'll spend like an hour editing one photo and then I have like 60 left, it's not going to take me a whole day to do that because I can then just edit that one photo and then just copy and paste and then go through and I know exactly like what you need to edit or not I know but like then you can kind of figure out what exactly you need to change to make it look better. So yes. Let's apply the road trip photo. This one's a little blurry and I don't know why. It's not like, shouldn't be like that. But there we go. And wow, I really like the light and blue skies personally. Um, along with the like heightened orange yellow. Um, I think it makes it, it creates a nice effect on all of this. Um, let's see if we adjust the exposure a little. There we go. Let's see what else. There's the U-Haul we used. I'm trying to think of the map photo. This is a place called Little Badlands. Jeruse Little Jerusalem's Little Badlands, I believe. Um, very pretty. It's a new state park. A lot of cactuses. It was not a bad walk either. And then it takes you to all these sand dunes. Oh, I got a nice little sun flare in this one. Um, here's all another good, let's see what we can do with this one. So as you can see, it's kind of hard to like see the actual rock figures. Um, but we want to see them. That's what we came here for, right? So let's look at our already presets. We have howdy trees. That one looks really good actually for that. We got road trip, but road trip's a lot more darker. We didn't really adjust. The highlights are down. The shadows are down versus howdy trees. Shadows are all the way up. Highlights are medium. Strolling, no. <laughs> okay, so we'll go with the Howdy Trees one, which, shockingly enough, because of messing with the highlights and the shadow, even though that, that Howdy Tree one came all the way from a picture like this, where literally they have like none of the same colors in them, because they're wearing a whatever, and then here we're in the desert, basically. Um, it still looks really nice. So let's see let's just see what white balance will do if we try to white balance out with the clouds. Um, no, I want more of the rock. Mm. It's kind of quick round. I think that looks fine. Uh, yeah, maybe lower the temperature a little bit. Or not. Uh, okay, so then there we have that. Especially with this photo though, I think we'll go in and we don't really need to touch the blues or anything like that. So we'll go into the colors and let's just adjust the yellowing hue. Um, I'd, I want it to look more, yeah. Um, and adjust the orange maybe, oh no. Let's, low key, let's make that a little darker. Let's kind of take out the orange. So I don't want I don't want the rock formations to look so orangey, so I'm just gonna take out the saturation of orange. Um, and then green, these little bushels, I guess should be a little more. They don't wanna change. Okay, that's fine. This looks good. So again, before and after. On the left, you can see squat. On the right, you can see all the little sands, something. I forgot what they're called. Um, we read about how they were made, I just don't remember. But yeah, I really like that one. I don't think I have that on my phone, so I'll definitely save that one. Um, here's the same photo, so then, yeah, this one really is a big difference. Um, so literally is like almost black at the beginning too. You can see everything in the photo. Let's see what else we got. Um, probably howdy trees again. Yep. Wow, that one made a big difference too. That's not the best photo. Oh, that's my sister. Okay, so road trip looks better for this one than it did previously. Strolling is still a no. Um, I actually think that road trip looks better than howdy trees at this angle with the light. The way that I was catching the light for this picture was much different because the light was a little more um behind us kind of not behind us but like more on the side 
The only thing is, it definitely is very orangey still. Actually, no, I don't want to do that. No, come back, come back to me. That looks better. That looks a little more normal. Um, she doesn't look as... Okay, so there we go. Um, we can also, let's try to do this again. Not this. Oh wait, actually, maybe. So, we're gonna basically take this one section. I'm gonna lower the exposure. Oh no, it's doing all but that section. I don't want that. Take it back, take it back. Go away. Okay, we're gonna take the brush, the radial brush tool, or adjustment brush tool. Um, low, layer it over this. From here, we will mess with this area to see. I actually think highlights will probably be the best to, yeah, let's lower the highlights, maybe lower the shadows a little. I want to lower the shadows, but I don't want that bottom piece to do that. So, I'm gonna, yeah. And then, maybe adds, or no, no. Oh no. Okay, I think we gotta go back with the black. Oh, that way, yeah. Okay, it looks a little weird, I won't lie. Okay, there. So we'll add some whites back. Okay. Take it back now, y'all. One home this time. <laughs> okay, that looks pretty good. Pretty, we chillin'. Now I know all of, not all of these are amazing. Um, oh, okay, so I accidentally uploaded. So here's my before, and then on my phone, I did this. So, fun times. Let's see what else. Okay, so this was called Little Jerusalem Badland State Park. Here was just a bunch of pictures of all the windmills in Kansas, Missouri, and all of that. Oh my gosh, there were so many. Oh, okay, this is the second we hit Colorado, the sunset. Um, let's see if road trip. Sunsets are very hard to edit. Um, I think Howdy Trees looks best. Just because the, there's so many colors that it's hard to try and take a photo. It's already hard to really capture a sunset because it's it just never is the same on a photo. Because the sun's freaking amazing and can do all this cool stuff that you can really only see with your eye and half the time you can't even see with your eye. Um, so, <laughs> I think that one will probably take a little longer to try and actually edit. So, let's see what else we got. Oh, where's the map photo? I love this photo. No? It's taking that same day. Oh, no. Ah, here's a good, oh, that one's already edited, darn. Um, we drove up Pikes Peak. Don't know if you, I think these are all already edited, dang. Yeah, I accidentally uploaded the bad, wrong ones. Um, but yeah, here's Pikes Peak. My dad drove up that, very proud of him, and he was very scared. If you're out there, I know you were. Okay, here's the unedited. So, I did road trip to this one. Um, but even applying road trip on here, uh, it's a little dark. So let's try to add some exposure. Brighten it up. Um, maybe try to like take away the exposure from over here. Not that much, just a little. I kind of want to add some blue too. Okay, yeah, so. Um, I'm adding blue just to this corner using the temperature tool. Um, and then adjusting 
the exposure in that one corner but I don't want to add blue because like as you can see his shirt's blue so if I added blue it would make the whole photo look off um, we don't want that so here's before and after looks good um, what else we got we have more rainfalls oh we have hanging rock in North Carolina went there for the school year or the start of last school year um, I, uh, let's see which one. That one's already edited. Oh! Let's try to take these people out. I think that'll be, that'll be fun, right? I think that's what I, I took this photo and then cropped these people out. So, um, this one's already edited. So now what we gotta do. Okay, if you're working on your computer, I realize you can scroll on your mouse up to make that bigger or like to change the size for now i think let's just see what this, that looks like <laughs> don't think that's gonna look very right oh okay so for this it did a little better Okay, let's just see what that looks like. Up close, not good. But pull back, not not best either. Ah. Okay, let's just try to. I don't know what's going on. I think we need rid of that that big one. Smaller ones look best. Okay. Uh, So I want to take, oh no, I want to do the other thing. I want to put this over here and take from here to kind of connect them, yeah. Um, and then same with like this. I want to take that and connect that over here. So that way we're creating like a nice little rigidy border. Wow, that looks so much better. Um, really looks a lot better without the people. We have people before and people after. Those are random people. I'm sure that if I was them, I'd want myself in the photo, but we're not, so I don't want them there. Uh, that looks, yeah, that looks good. I think it looks very believable in the after. Then we have a lot of trees. Oh, let's go back to this, the cat. Let's go back to where we started from. Um, let's see, out of the three that we've done, what looks best for him? What highlights his colors? These are all kind of work. So we gotta look at the ground. Um, Cause strolling, as you can tell, that's not right. Road trip looks better. Patty trees is a little more natural. So it all depends on what you want. Um, let's tr let's see if real quick we can bust out one more preset that is gonna make this cat look very, um, uh, I don't know what the right words to say is, but basically, ah, I know it's on one, one of these photos. Let's make this cat look very professional. Okay, so this one is a little more intricate. Low-key though, I'm like, shouldn't be giving out all these preset numbers, so you guys are welcome. People make bank off of these too. You can definitely sell some. Um, that's where I know some of my friends have definitely sold presets before when they just needed money. Um, Cause it takes a while for some of these to get looking good. I know, I really like, the colors on this cat. I wish there were some different around him to make him pop. But we don't have enough time for that. Negative 50. 
quickly. Colors. Let's go to the painter. Let's make it a little more cool tone, this one. We've been doing a lot of orange tone colors. Um, but, you know, let's switch it up. We'll add to the vibrance. We'll honestly take out. Mm, I think that's too much. 30? Yeah. Um, I wanted to focus on the cat. I don't want it to focus on anything else. Um, for like the effects. We're gonna dehaze, clarify. We want some clarity on this, that's about it. Um which I don't even know where that is for here. Is it on the detail? No? We'll sharpen it just a little bit. Uh, okay. And then, the color mixing. This is where it gets detailed again. Okay, we're gonna go zero. Saturation of plus 71. Now we're going to put these in and then we'll probably have to mess with it based on the cat. Negative. Oh no! Don't want to do that. Negative two. Oh, that did just say clarity. There's people looking at. Ooh! Hold on, guys. I'm trying to make it work before the end. Green. This one's a bit of a change from how I've been doing all of my photos. Um, yeah, the cat's very orange right now. I think we'll fix him. We'll fix the orange in a little bit. Although it definitely made him the star of the show. I don't think there's really any, oh, actually there is blues in the sidewalk. So, okay. We take this, let's go to orange now because obviously what we had before, I think it's the saturations really gotta go down on him, not too much. Right there. Wow. Little kitty, <laughs> cat butt. Um, yeah. How cute. So, I know there's also a way to just copy your presets over and like paste them. I don't quite know. Wow, you literally got a gif of the cat. <laughs> that is him. <laughs> but, there we go. So, I hope you had fun editing some photos. Oh, here's the, here's where we started. <laughs> Not the best. Let's put a different one on there. There we go. Much better. Um, but yeah. So, if you have any questions about Lightroom, Google them. It can only help so much. Really can't do the best. I think this was a this was a good win from today. Um, without the man's. But yeah. So. I'm glad, I'm glad you learned something today. Um, and if you wanna continue learning, catch us here next week, six o'clock um, at our regular streams. Um, yeah, if you have any more questions, just visit our website. And yeah, I hope everyone has a great week. Good luck on any test you got out there. It's gonna be rough, but we'll make it through together. Uh, yeah. Good night, everyone. Have a great time. <laughs> ah, you get to see what I was doing.